Do groups outperform individuals? We tend to think that two heads are better than one, that groups are better than individuals. But is this true? Most of the time, yes, group performance and group decisions are better than those of individuals. But it also depends on a variety of factors, including the type of task we're talking about. On an additive task, the group's performance equals the sum of all the members' contributions. For example, the amount of noise a crowd makes, the amount of snow a crew shovels, or the amount of money a nonprofit organization raises. Groups typically outperform individuals when it comes to this type of task. But social loafing and other processes can hinder the group's potential. On a conjunctive task, the group's performance is determined by the individual with the poorest performance. For instance, running a relay race, the slowest runner will reduce the overall performance of the group. In other words, the team is only as good as its slowest runner. Here, individuals typically outperform groups. What this means is that each runner will typically race faster when they compete individually versus when they are part of a team. On disjunctive tasks, the group's performance is determined by the individual with the best performance. A work group trying to choose the best course of action, or a group of friends playing a trivia game where there's one right answer. The person who has the most knowledge or the most experience in the situation determines the group's performance. Individuals also tend to outperform groups on disjunctive tasks because the group doesn't always know or recognize which member has the best performance. Social psychologists recognize that groups can exceed expectations and produce more than would ever be possible with individuals working independently. Process gains occur when group members work together in a way that enhances the group's performance. More specifically, when a group performs better than we would expect, given the knowledge and skills of its members. This clip of a soccer match between two teams is an example of process gain. Take a moment to watch it. Note that a single player could not perform this sequence alone. The success of this play lies in the coordination of the group. Each member did exactly what they needed to do, and they worked together in perfect synchrony to make the goal. Process losses occur when a group performs worse than we would expect, given the knowledge and skills of its members. In tug of war, we might predict that each group member to pull with the same force as they do when pulling the rope alone. But this doesn't happen. Each person uses less force. Plus, some people fall down. Others get rope splinters or don't have enough room to move. And the total force of the group ends up being less than the total force of each individual member added up separately. This loss of potential, or this loss of force, is called process loss. Here on the slide are four examples of group processes that can hinder group performance, brainstorming, group polarization, groupthink, and biased sampling. You'll learn more about each of these concepts in the next video.